In this video, we're going to look at how to verify solutions to Schrodinger's equation. So first, before we get into the weeds of this, just uh, again reiterating that Schrodinger's equation is a second order differential equation. And so any valid solution to Schrodinger's equation will give you a set of energy values that correspond to a wave function, right? So when we talk about solutions to Schrodinger's equations, So solutions are the wave function and the energy, right? So usually you construct the Hamiltonian based on the physical situation or you uh, figure out which potential, what type of potential function is acting on your system and you build that up into Schrodinger's equation and you get a valid solution for the wave function and the energy. So in order to verify that something is a solution to Schrodinger's equation, you want to be able to plug those solutions in and see if it fits with the equation. So let's let's kind of go through an example to illustrate this. So for the sake of simplistic simplicity, we're going to look at the free particle. So by free particle, what we mean here is that there's no potential acting on this particle. So the potential energy is zero. So just think about a, a free particle that's moving in space, uh, completely unencumbered by any potential acting on it, right? This simplifies our Schrodinger's equation to the following, right? So now we just have the kinetic energy term, h bar squared over two m. x squared is equal to e psi of x. Right now, there are ex an acceptable solution for this uh, for this equation is the following, where psi is, or I should say, psi of x is going to be equal to a some constant a times e to the i k x plus b e to the negative i k x. Right, so you have a sum of these two functions, right, with the constant a and a constant k uh, involved in the in this function, right, um, and the energy solutions are k squared h bar squared over two m. Right, so what we want to be able to do is take these solutions, and we want to verify that they are valid solutions to Schrodinger's equation for a free particle. So what that means is that we're gonna to have to look at this uh, equation and we're gonna to have to plug in the wave function and see if when we take the second derivative of the wave function on the left-hand side, we get the energy times the wave function back again on the right-hand side, right? So we actually wanna execute the operators on the left-hand side and figure out if we get what we have on the right hand side. So let's let's go through this. So what I want to do is uh, just plug this in on the left hand side, right? So we're talking about this h bar squared over two m, right? We're taking the second derivative of the wave function, And so if we plug in what we have here, right, we're going to be taking the second derivative of this guy, right? So this wave function here, right? So we want to actually plug that in. So we got a e to the i k x plus b e to the negative i k x. Right. So if we take the second derivative here, right, remember that the, you know, uh, derivative of e, the e to the x is e to the x. But if you have these constants out front, then those constants come down. So if you take the second derivative of both of those functions, you end up with the following. So here you'll have um, i k squared times a e to the i k x plus here you'll have negative i k squared times b 
e to the negative i k x. Right. So because of the properties of the exponential, right, it's going to pretty much remain unchanged. These constants are just going to come down both times that you take the derivative. OK, so uh, from there, we have to make use of, you know, the old identity for imaginary numbers. Right. I squared is going to be equal to negative one. Right. So using that, we can uh, simplify this expression. So we have negative H bar squared over two M comes down. And then in parentheses here, we'll have negative K squared A E to the I K X minus K squared B E to the negative I K X. Right. So um, we can factor out this K squared um, out front. So we end up with K squared H bar squared over two M a e to the i k x minus or plus b e to the negative i k x right after we factor that out this uh becomes a positive right so um so looking at this in fact to try to make this point clear i'm going to write what was on the left hand side bring that down again right so we've applied this operator and now we want to ask ourselves, are these solutions valid solutions to Schrodinger's equation, right? And the answer here is yes. And the reason is we've gotten the wave function back here, right? So this is our original wave function. This is psi of x. And then all of the stuff out front here is a constant, right? The mass of the particle, k is a constant, h bar is Planck's constant, right? So this stuff is the energy. Right. And that's exactly the energy value um, that we were looking for. Right. That we got from just applying the operator to the wave function. So this is how you verify a solutions to Schrodinger's equation. You just plug it in, plug in the wave function, uh, use the operations from your Hamiltonian operator and see if you get the wave function back times some energy. If you do, then it's a valid solution to Schrodinger's equation. If you don't, then it isn't. Right. So it's really just that simple. Just uh, putting your, your wave function solution through a test run to see if it's a valid solution to Schrodinger's equation.